Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. So I've been doing a lot of videos on Cura lately, and I think this will probably be my last one for a while, at least until the next version comes out. Um, but I'm gonna drill into my top five plugins. So there are, I think, 50 something, maybe 60 something plugins on the marketplace. So I kind of narrowed those down to the five that I use the most often. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over to the computer. I'm gonna show you what those plugins are, how to install them, and then kind of go over the benefits they provide and then uh, how to actually use them. If you have any questions about the process or would like to see any other videos, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. The invite is in the video description. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. All right, so let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and get started. All right, so we're here at the computer. I've got Cura up. Let's go ahead and load the plugin marketplace. And I'm gonna show you the five plugins that I wanna go over. I'll talk about them briefly, and then we'll kind of drill into them a little bit more from there. All right, so just go over to the top right here, go into marketplace. Uh, the first time you open it, it will take a little bit for it to load. It's not exactly the quickest marketplace, uh, but it does work just fine. All right, now that that's loaded, I'm gonna go through the plugins really quick and then uh, show you how to install them and then show you where to check to make sure that they are installed, then we can drill into them. Uh, the first one here is Mesh Tool. Uh, I'll show you what that's capable of here in a couple minutes. Uh, next one is Settings Guide. It's really like the best overview of all of the settings for Cura that exist. It's an awesome guide. And then if you scroll down to the Marketplace, uh, this Barbarian Units one is more of a bonus plugin. I'm not putting that in the top five, uh, but it's useful if you're wanting to convert objects that are in uh, inches over to metric. It gets used occasionally. Uh, I messed around with it a little bit recently. Um, if you if the, all the objects are already metric and you hit it, it's going to convert it to inches and then it's going to mess everything up. So uh, it's a little bit awkward if you don't know what you're doing with it. So if you're somebody who depends heavily on using the metric system and you potentially work with objects that are in inches, that might be worth uh, an install. Uh, but that's all I'm going to mention about it here. Next one here is calibration shapes. Uh, this one is really awesome for giving you basically everything you need to uh, get started with for calibrating a printer. It pulls in a bunch of objects from Thingiverse, it already has them in there, it just loads them. Uh, we'll go over that in a bit more detail here. And then if we keep scrolling down, we have two more down here. Uh, it's Startup Optimizer and then Tab Anti-Warping. If you click on one of them, you'll see either install or installed here. So this one's already installed, so it shows installed. Uh, here's an example. If I went back and just chose one that I didn't install, um, it would show install here, and it's a button that you can click. Uh, once you install the plugins, you do have to restart Cura, uh, so keep that in mind. And then after you restart Cura, if you want to make sure that everything is installed correctly, if you go back into the marketplace, go over to installed, it's going to show you the plugins that are currently installed. All right, so the first one I wanted to talk about is Startup Optimizer. Uh, there's not really much to show. It's more of a descriptive thing. Uh, so what it does is it basically makes Cura startup faster by only loading things that is selected versus everything that it can potentially load. If you have a lot of printers and other materials and stuff like that in there, it's only going to load the one that is selected, at least based on my understanding. I did a couple tests. Uh, I only have a handful of materials and one printer on these. Uh, but I do have a handful of plugins as well, as you can see, which will impact the startup time. Um, but on average, I was able to reduce the startup time by about a second and a half, uh, which isn't a big deal, but I hate waiting for things to start. And that time will change drastically based on the number of printers, materials you have, and the actual specs of your computer. Um, my laptop is decently high end, uh, so it didn't have as large of an impact as it will on more of a mid-tier type laptop. Uh, so keep that in mind. And again, it's free, so you get a little performance bump and it costs you nothing. All of these plugins here are free. 
All right, so let's go into the actual grid. All right, so the first one I want to show is going to be the tab anti-warping plugin. Uh, so if you're in an area where you only see warping on like one side of the print or something, and you just want to put a brim there instead of trying to put a brim around the entire print, you can do that. All you got to do once you have the plugin installed is click on the object, go down to tab anti-warping, and then click where you want it. So let's say uh, this front right corner here is where it's warping. I would click there. It's going to uh, create a circle. Then you can change the size of that circle. So let me actually undo that because uh, this is a larger object. A 10 millimeter circle isn't going to be good. So let's just say uh, if I did 25 and then I would go ahead and put that in. And then you'll see that here if we go ahead and slice this. All right, then once that's sliced, if we go over to preview, we can kind of change the angle here. And it's going to create a circle around it. Uh, let's go down to the first layer. Uh, basically what it's doing is it's creating an area for a circle. Uh, it's not the best if it's not a square edge. So actually, let me slice one more thing to show you really quick. All right, so I went ahead and sliced this again. I just threw another one in here to kind of show you. It's basically creating a circle off of the side. So if you just got a square or a rectangle or square base, uh, it's a little bit cleaner, uh, but it does still work with uh, these other types of shapes as well. Uh, but basically it's creating a brim that adds additional support. And then I change the X, Y distance to uh, 0.1 millimeters. So that way it's close enough. So it's actually acting as a brim and uh, providing that support. But if we go up one layer, you see it adds a little bit more just so that it does kind of provide some structure. Um, but it's really the main purpose is to help provide a little bit of additional adhesion in areas where it might be struggling on your build plate for whatever reason, whether it just be uh, you have a draft coming through in that area, which in that case is probably better to move the printer. But if you can't, um, this could help uh, versus doing a brim on the entire thing or a raft. Or if you have warps in specific areas on your build plate and you don't have a auto bed leveling kit or it's too much to adjust for. You can potentially use this to help just kind of keep that print down as well. Uh, one thing to note is you want to make sure under supports that you have enable support brim enabled. Because if you don't, what it's going to do is uh, that whole area where it's acting like a brim all next to each other, it's just going to be hollowed out uh, basically like this. And it's not actually touching or acting as a brim. It's really just treating it like an actual support. Uh, so that's not going to provide the extra adhesion that you're looking for. All right, the next one is the mesh tooling. If you right click on the object or if you go up to extensions and the mesh tooling, you can get to the menu for it. And so it's checking to see if it's watertight here. And then in some cases, if there's issues where it's not, I've seen like some rectangles or random objects that I've tried to slice where there's gaps that shouldn't be there. Um, this kind of points those out and I've been able to fix some of those gaps with this uh, versus before I'd switch over to like Simplify 3D and it would be able to slice it without having those same issues. Uh, but if you slice it and there is an issue, um, you'll be able to go in and uh, fix simple holes if it's just like simple gaps from things not necessarily connecting all the way or it not reading it properly to solving some of the more complex issues. Um, I've had random results with this. The fix simple holes tends to work fine, and that's really what I use this plugin for. So I don't really use most of the features with it, uh, but it does offer the fix, the more advanced uh, attempt to fix option. And then it can also split the model into parts as well. Um, I haven't used that myself. Uh, again, I'm really focusing on this to fix some of the issues, but those are things you might want to try to look at as well. And then I have used the randomized location. So if you have like four or five objects on the build plate and you want to just randomize where those actually are, uh, this will do that. And then it can also reset everything back to center. But again, main purpose of me showing you this tool was the checks that it has built in. Like when you load an object here, let me switch out of this one. One second. All right. So I know that this baby Yoda has some issues. It's not watertight. And then it shows some of that in the x-ray view. Um, but this kind of points out those type of issues and then uh, you can make the decision whether it's worth trying to correct for that object or if it's fine as is. So it automatically did that on loading it, uh, but I always still do 
a check or analyze mesh and then get the full results back. So here it just gives you an overview of what the actual object is and then if you do a check, that's where it checks to make sure everything is as expected or so how it thinks it's supposed to be. Yeah, so you're saying it's not watertight and might have it might not print properly. So with this object specifically, that's fine. I don't have any issues with it. But if you're trying to print like a cube or something like that, or objects that are supposed to be watertight, um, it might be worth looking into trying to fix those or get a different object and skip that print altogether. It's really just to give you information on what you're trying to print to make sure that it's going to do what you think it's going to do. Same with the preview command. Like I said, I always stress that. I always use a preview when I'm before I actually print anything to make sure everything looks okay. All right, the next thing I wanted to go over here is the parts for calibration. If you go into this, it gives you basically everything you can think of that you might want to use for calibration. So you got your basic calibration cube, 20 by 20, X, Y, Z. Uh, you've got uh, temperature tower start at 190. One thing to note here is it doesn't actually set the G code, uh, so it won't actually change the temperatures. It's just the part itself. So I have a video that covers how to change the temperature between or mid print so you can actually print a temperature tower. I'll link to that in the description below. Let me remove these. And then you also got things for like flow tests, um, retraction tests. So you just your basic retraction test part. You've got a lot of um, first layer test in here as well. Bed level calibration, uh, where it just gives you that grid to see how it prints. Oops, my bad. Deleted the wrong one. But basically, it's a plugin that brings all of the calibration tools you might want to use that you would be looking for manually over on Thingiverse um, into one location and just right there anytime you need it. Uh, so again, all of these plugins are free. Uh, some provide a little bit more value than others, and some provide more value than others at certain times. Like if you're setting up a printer or trying to calibrate your printer, things like that. Um, this plugin is going to be a lot more beneficial at that point than when everything is running smooth. But overall, I think this is a great list of calibration parts. Um, it includes all the ones that I typically use. Uh, so having them in one place is really a nice feature. All right, the last thing I wanted to go over is the settings guide. You can access the settings guide from uh, going to extension, then settings guide and settings guide. Uh, it would have everything in here. It'll take a second to load. Um, but you can go into each option and really drill into everything that it can do with a lot of detail. Uh, basically, every explanation you would want to know about that setting is covered here. I think I mentioned this earlier, but this is the best overall guide of all of the actual settings inside of Cura that I've seen. It's very complete and it's integrated, so it is pretty cool. Um, another thing here is if we go over to preferences, so settings guide and preferences, um, by default now this is enabled, but it shows the article settings over in the tooltips. So let me show what that looks like. You do have to restart if you want to switch between that. Um, but instead of getting the little small list of what is included here, you're basically getting that full in-depth article or document on the settings just by hovering over. So that's something they added pretty recently, I believe. I don't think it was there in the last couple versions. Uh, but having that when you're going through trying to remember what some of these settings are is very beneficial because a lot of times the default information that's provided just isn't enough to get you what you need. Uh, so really having this here is pretty nice. All right, so those are the five plugins that I typically use the most. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and leave a comment below or join me on Discord. And if there are plugins you use all the time that you feel are worth creating a video on or mentioning, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below as well. I would love to hear from you. All right, guys, so those are the plugins that I use the most often. Um, I only covered five there. Uh, like I mentioned in the beginning, there are others I use, um, but I didn't want to make this video too long, so I figured uh, going to my top five made the most sense. If there are any plugins that you feel are worth mentioning or you feel I should do a video on, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks.